let's let's get this on the line. Is Justin a big old softy? Is he a big teddy bear when it comes to him and the girls? Oh, a hundred percent. Engage out of the park. The NSR Media Network presents Out of the Park with Barry Davis, brought to you by Adam Goodman, The Jaywalk, and Foundation Physiotherapy. Well, Kristen, with every marriage, there's going to be some things that you have in common and some things that are different about you. And I've been perusing your social media, uh, maybe stalking <laughs> a little bit and seeing <laughs> the the posts that you have on Instagram and on Twitter. And you are a very active, very uh, media f- savvy uh, when it comes to social media. Your husband, on the other hand, is not at all. Uh, <laughs> have you tried in any way to get him more involved in social media? Oh, yes. I try all the time to get him on social media. Um, he just doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the point. He doesn't understand what people would be interested in him saying. Like, he just has no clue. And for me, it started because we're away from our family and friends all the time. That's how I keep up with everybody, right? And then I just like to post stuff. Sutton, my our four-year-old daughter, is hilarious in my opinion. And so I like posting stuff of her because I'm like, if I told people these stories, they I really wouldn't believe that just popped out of her mouth. So um, anyway, so it just kind of, for me, that's fun to keep up with just because um, a lot of things that happen in my life, I'm like, this isn't real life. And if I didn't document this, people would not believe it actually happened. So, but Justin, he just has like no interest in it. He doesn't, like I said, he just doesn't get that why people would care what he's doing during his day. And I've tried to explain it to him because he doesn't care. Right. But I'm, you know, I'm one of the ones who's like looking at all these people I don't know either. And I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. I wish I could do that or something like that. But he, he, he does not get it. Does he ever ask you why the heck you do it? Oh yeah. All the time. He was like, Oh, what are you going to do? Put that on your tweeter now is what he (laughs) calls it. Oh oh, yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, this is hilarious. Of course I'm going to put that on there, you know? And he's like, why? He really just does not understand. So. And the thing is you get to see some good things, but then you're also going to see some bad things once in a while. And I remember may have been last year, a couple of years ago where this is where I think your your Twitter handle and your social media really blew up, and you know what I'm talking about. But you you had you had a heckler, and and you put him in his place. Yeah. So going back to Justin, that's the kind of the other reason I'm glad he doesn't have social media is because he, these guys have to see enough criticism. Just I mean. I mean, all over the media in general. And then if you have somebody who doesn't know a thing of what they're talking about and then is sitting there behind their computer, like, you know, trying to tell you how terrible you are, um, that's nice to avoid that for him. But yes, sometimes it comes to me instead. (laughs) So, um, and I'm like, I just, you know, I don't get that. Um, I don't, I don't get, I mean, I wasn't up there. I didn't strike out. So, I mean, I don't know what you're talking to me about, but, um, even sometimes like, 90% of the time I can keep my mouth shut, but you know what? I don't mind if you come at me with like funny mean things. Like I, there was one um, guy the other day, he wrote something about um, there's AOL dial up slow. And then there's Justin smoke running the bases slow. And I was dying laughing at that. You know, like that's funny. That's not a criticism. That's just the truth. Right. (laughs) I mean, listen, I appreciate sarcasm and like humor as much as the next person. So that stuff is hilarious. But then if you come at me with like stuff that just is mean for no reason, then you know, that's not funny. And sometimes I just gotta, you know, clap back, I guess. Is it true that back in the Seattle days, you actually uh, went to social media for some telecommunications company that uh, was inappropriate to you? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Please share this one. Yeah. Well, so the, um, I, gosh, this was a little bit ago. So I'm trying to remember exactly, but I, it was Verizon who we use. And so I called them and they like, I love how uh, they charge you for data, but then there's no way to like dispute that. Right? Oh, I know so that one. Can, yep. <laughs> it's like, okay, you got us there. Um, but uh, so our data was just going out of control and we weren't using it any nor- and like differently than normal. So we were getting all these charges. So anyways, so I call them and I'm like explaining to them about uh, my husband and he's, you know, not using it anymore, but he's just getting it. And uh, gosh, I forgot how it related, but somehow or another she insinuated that I, Oh, 
because I said, you know, all he did, he watches video on his phone. She goes, well, you should be happy that he's sitting there watching video while he's in a hotel room instead of going out and about is oh basically how God. she put it. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just thought that that was, you know, I don't mind, like, you, it's really hard to offend me. But, like, when it's, like, you know, a little bit over the top, I'm like, eh. So I wrote something. And then, of course, you know. I, there was a blog that was like, Justin Smoke's wife said this, that she should be happy he's not cheating on her. I'm like, oh, great. I didn't mean for it to turn into a thing. And so, that's okay. A, a few years ago, you remember the uh, 2015 playoff run, and I was interviewing Kevin Pillar in the clubhouse, and his whole family was surrounded, uh, surrounding yeah. him. And in one of the pictures, it appears as though that Amanda was blowing me a kiss, which I'm sure oh, she was probably blowing <laughs> to Kevin or her parents. <laughs> so next thing you know, that ends up on social media that, you know, Amanda Pilar was, uh, you oh. know, hitting on a, a Blue Jays reporter. And of course, when I told my wife that, she looked at me and said, yeah, as if you would stand a chance. And, and then I said to Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, you better watch out. You know, Amanda's uh, giving me the eyes. And he looked at yeah. me and said, yeah, as if you stand a chance. So there was there was no worries <laughs> there. No, absolutely not. And really, what they should have known is, hey, they were giving us free champagne, so maybe she was blowing you a kiss, and who really cares? Well, because exactly. We were drinking champagne. We just won the, you know, American League. So, you know, as much fun as that was for the players, and I know that there was the, you know, the team thing going on where they're all spraying champagne, and the families on the outside at the beginning, but then you guys do get to celebrate on the field and, you know, separately. Was were you? Did you feel the same way that the players felt? Because I know, as as a reporter, you, there's always that slight distance between yourself and the players. But when I was in the middle of that, and guys, including your husband, spraying me in the face with champagne, <laughs> you feel like you are part of it, like you've actually won something yourself. Well. I mean, I know some people are going to be like, ugh, get over it. But honestly, we do feel like we do because, I mean, we spend our entire lives following them and basically um, helping them, and I hate to say allowing, but allowing them to do what they love to do. And we take care of everything else outside of basically, I mean, my role in our marriage is to do everything except for play baseball. And that way, Justin can go to the field and do what he needs to do and not have any other worries on his plate. So that being said, you know, we eight months out of the year, we're away from our friends and family too. And the only person I have is Justin here. And that's only half of the season too. So um, you have to like, remember that basically we're going to every game. Anytime anything's happening with him on the field, that uh, weight of the world when things aren't going well, we feel that too. And when things are going awesome, we, you know, feel that as well. So, um, you know, it's as much a part of our lives, other, although we're not the ones actually physically doing it, we have all the emotional side of it behind it too. So um, I felt like it was our championship too. I mean, in a different way, obviously, but um, yeah, it's nice to get to celebrate that with the guys. And I mean, they know, they know how much, um, how nice it is to have us, um, be able to kind of take care of all the stuff behind the scenes. So, and you talk about behind the scenes and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, while the game's being played, many of the wives are out in the stands watching, but there's also the family lounge, uh, close to the Toronto Blue Jays clubhouse down in, in the bowels of the Rogers center. So mm -hmm. do, do, do a lot of the ladies just get together with the kids and, and almost have like a play date while the game's going on down there? Oh, uh, well, no. <laughs> what we do yeah. is we go to the game early and we drop the kids off in the family lounge and <sighs> then we go to the games and enjoy the games by ourselves. See, now that's but, great. You get like uh, babysitting uh, there. Well, absolutely. The Blue Jays are awesome in that way. Every team handles um, how they do different things differently. But this team, they provide it to us, no charge. This team is amazing. And they have sitters that have been there for 20 years. So honestly, um, you they show up 30 minutes before the game and they're there 30 minutes after. And you better believe at 30 minutes before the game, I'm there saying bye to Sutton and heading up to the stands to go watch the game in peace. That's for sure. <laughs> I know you're probably used to it by now, but what was it like the first time you saw Sutton running the bases on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon after the game and, and even seeing Justin on the field there with her? 
Um, that part makes it, that's what it's all about. Right. So like Sutton, um, when she got to run the bases and she gets, she loves it so much. And she thinks before we leave every night, um, we go out towards like the outfield and they have it open cause they're coming on with machines and stuff to clean, um, the field and all that. And she has to go touch the field cause she calls it her field. Of course. And so yes. So she has to touch the field before we leave every night, but, uh, running the bases is the cutest thing. And the guys get to come out there and, um, you know, get, we get pictures and you know it's just it's nice it's such um it's the personal side of it right so uh they get to forget immediately what happened in the game if they want to sometimes we don't want to forget what happened in the no. game but <laughs> when we want to forget they get to forget really quick because the kids are out there just you know loving getting to do that kind of stuff and, and this is the thing about justin not being on social media because Fans that may be there on the field with their kids and they may see Justin, that's their, their glimpse, their short little glimpse of seeing what Justin Smoke is like away from the baseball field. And I've had the opportunity to get to know him a little bit away from the baseball field. And uh, I know that he, you know, he loves his hunting and his fishing. And I know mm. that to get a compliment from him is very rare. And <laughs> there was a time a couple of years ago where he kind of looked me up and down and he said, nice suit. And I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know, was he being sarcastic? Was he serious? And I saw you that day and I told you, and he said, well, if he's saying that to you, then, then he really means it because you don't often get that from him. Yeah. Well, I will say this, the, two, the thing that we have most in common is our sa- sarcasm. So I believe he probably did mean it, but there always is a chance that it could have been like, uh, you know, you're right. So, um, he is super sarcastic and he, but he, he doesn't, um, he just, he's so different. People see him, um, and he's super monotone and he is, and he's super chill and super laid back. But honestly, it's so funny when people explain to like, say to me that, you know, he's shy or use that. And I'm like, shy. (laughs) He's not, I mean, outgoing towards people he doesn't know. No, he like is very kind of, uh, reserved in that way, but around people that he knows, I mean, you can't really get him to stop talking. So it's just, it's just so funny because he's complete opposite and he just doesn't give in to the hype either. He doesn't like the entertainment side of baseball, which um, unfortunately I've tried to explain to him so many times, like, Hey, that's part of it. Right. But he doesn't want the attention. He doesn't, he doesn't, he wants to play baseball and that's it. He doesn't want people to see him as something, you know, bigger than he is. But, um, you know, I also try to remind him, like, remember when you were watching games and, you know, as a kid and you thought these guys were so cool, like, you know, you, I said, just remember that. So the kids part of it, he gets, but he doesn't understand like being looked at as more than, you know, just a baseball player. So. And the thing is, you know, I look at him and Jay Happ as very similar because we had Morgan on, about a month or so ago, and, and, you know, she revealed pretty much the same thing, that while what people see is this very stoic, serious guy that, you know, the most entertaining thing you really see from Jay Happ is him jumping over the line when he goes from the mound, right? <laughs> right. But, but when you get to know Jay, he has a very dry sense of humor. He, right. And when it comes to Jay Happ and the kids, my goodness, he becomes a complete softie. Now, right. let's, let's get this on the line. Is Justin... A big old softy. Is he a big teddy bear when it comes to him and the girls? Oh, a hundred percent. I think us having girls is a big help there because I mean, he, the second we had Sutton, he was just already like given the goo goo gagas and all that. Now I, I don't know how he'd be with a boy. I always was interested in that, but with the girls, he melts. Uh, my favorite thing that him and Sutton do, Sutton's obsessed with dancing with him to Beauty and the Beast and he pretends he's the beast and she's Belle and he'll kill me for saying this. And I think I was telling you that she like, they like to play, um, uh, she wants to play either hair salon or restaurant. And so, and he'll come in there and he'll use an accent and, you know, say, you know, what can I order from your menu? I don't know, just silly stuff, but like just what every dad would or should do, you know? So um, definitely huge, huge softy with the girls. Kristen, I think our listeners would pool their money together and raise a billion dollars to see some video or pictures oh, gosh. of Justin <laughs> dancing or playing hairdresser. 
Think about it. You know, I did post a picture of him dancing with um, Sutton and he was holding Berkeley, I think, at the time. Um, And but I didn't do video because he would then kill me. But I did get a picture. (laughs) He would know he's not on social media. I know. But you know what? These guys, these guys will know because there have been times where I I forgot what was posted or anything or if anybody posts anything and it's embarrassing. The next day, that person has something at their locker with like a printout of like the Twitter post or whatever real. Really big, yeah, and like they believe me, they get it, even if it's from their wives' uh, uh, yeah. social media. Yeah, so. I, was, I was gonna say, you know, the, the best thing to do is to just block all the players, but you know, I know <laughs> wives can talk too, right? You know, oh, oh yeah. And, and I've seen this. I've seen my wife do that. Oh, check out this cute little thing that so and so did, and then all of a sudden, exactly. yeah, it's, it doesn't yeah. always go over well. Yeah, and Kevin Pilar is probably the one that would first point it out to Justin and. You know, the- yes and no, but now he has a little girl and he's doing the same stuff. So maybe last year he would have done yeah. that, but not so much this year. And that's what the one of the, my um, one of my favorite things, and it was the biggest uh, compliment I think was when uh, Kevin was talking to us last year when they found out that they were having a little girl, and he was saying that the most um, the thing he's so excited for um, when he found out he was having a girl is because he's seen Justin the way he is at the field, which is again super dry, always sarcastic and talking junk basically we'll put it that way and um that when he's around uh Sutton was um uh, Sutton and Berkeley now um he just melts and turns into a completely completely different person and he really doesn't care who's around when they're around he'll talk like what you know he'll do all that stuff right in front of everybody too so Kevin was saying he was so excited to see how he is and I just thought that that was a good um you know, sweet compliment. So a lot of times uh, men, well, they eventually grow up and, you know, when they're young boys, they can be a certain way. And as they get older, they, they settle down and mature. Now you have known Justin an awfully long time. Uh, (laughs) First of all, share with us how old you guys were when you met and what was a young Justin smoke like? Oh gosh. Okay. So when we first met, it was actually in fifth grade. Um, I moved to it's Goose Creek, South Carolina, but more people would more, um, be what they would know it more as Charleston, South Carolina, but I moved there in fifth grade. And, um, so at the time when we were there, um, I was dating, you know, this one guy and my best friend was dating another. And then one day we were just bored. So we decided to switch. And this is a true story. We really did just switch and the guys could have cared less. So therefore I started dating Justin and she was yeah. dating him. And um, anyways, but of course that's fifth grade. So I ended up moving away for my seventh and eighth grade year, but came back in high school. And then we started dating again and dated um, throughout college and yeah, so it's just, uh, it's been a long time. I like to say he's been lucky for a really long time. Yes. Um, the other couple, whatever became of them? Yeah, so they're not together anymore. But um, us and our group of friends from middle school and college have, like, stayed together and been, you know, we're still best friends. And um, the guy I used to date in fifth grade, actually, Justin was just in his wedding this off season. No so way. It's just, oh, yeah. So, but we, like I said, we have stayed close with um, our friends from uh, high school, middle school since, since then. So I would think Justin owes this other guy a lot for, <laughs> I mean, he, he won the grand prize. He got you out of this deal. I mean, don't worry. I let him know that every day. <laughs> don't you even worry. He's got that figured out at this point. <laughs> is he, uh, is he big on the diaper changes? Um, is he big on the diaper changes? Well, what do you think? <laughs> um, so with Sutton, I will, I will give this to him. With Sutton, we had her at the very beginning of the off-season. I had his help for five months straight, and I even admitted to him, and this is a lot for me. I admitted to him once we had Berkeley, and I he wasn't there to help in the beginning, uh, how much help he really was. He did so much with Sutton and helped me. And This time around, um, I had her at Berkeley in May, so we had to be home. And then, of course, we had to stay home until um, she was old enough to travel, and we could get everything figured out. With her passport and all that but um so he and he only got three days to come home for yeah, that kind of sucks child. yeah don't get me that's a whole another story and i probably get myself in trouble for talking too much about how that's not right but anyways so he was home for three days and um and then we came back we came up here as soon as we could so now we get the excuse of oh it's baseball season you know i just don't know if i can change a dirty diaper which 
bully me. I, uh, you know, I mean, he could accidentally, you know, hurt his finger or get a blister right. or, or diaper right. rash on his hand. And then he takes it right. over four and then it's all oh, your fault, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you know, my favorite, you know, with all the hand, foot, mouth stuff coming out now, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, I, you wouldn't want that. Then I'd be on the DL for 10 days. I'm like, are you kidding me? Change the diaper. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is but, he superstitious? So many players. I mean, you've seen a lot of baseball and you see a lot of weirdo things going on, whether it be strange mustaches or wearing their socks high or doing something bizarre, not right. shaving. Is Justin into any of those weird superstitions? He doesn't have anywhere it's like, okay, we have to do this. But he will do stuff along the lines where if he um, if he came home and he sat in a certain place, I'll just like kind of notice that he's like sitting in that part of the couch again or like just ridiculous stuff, right? And I think um, like at night we'll have watched MLB Network and I'm home trying to catch up on my Bachelor in Paradise, of course. Yes. And he's over there like, oh, well, you know, yesterday I had a really good game and we watched uh, MLB Network before we went to bed. So he uses it to his advantage, like to his advantage is what he does. Um, And he's sneaky, thinks he's sneaky about it. But um, he will do like, uh, you know, he won't shave the um, beard. Well, if you can call it that, like he won't trim his facial hair, you know, do that kind of thing. So I didn't even know he shaved because, you know, so blonde, you can't yeah. really tell, right? Yeah, that's why I said, I guess we wouldn't call it a beard. We would just say who trimmed the facial hair, <laughs> that, that kind of thing.